Thank you everyone for joining us for this webinar using lighting design to tell a story presented by Jenny Bass. My name is Laura Lawrence and I'm the Global Marketing Director at Harman. Just a few things before we get started. Everyone on the call is muted to keep down noise levels during the webinar. However, there is a Q&A function where you can submit questions to the presenter and she'll try to answer as many questions as possible at the end. This webinar is being recorded and the link will be made available a few days after this presentation. We do have a number of other webinars taking place over the next few months for audio, lighting, video, and control. And we'd like to encourage you to take a look at the different webinars in our Learning Sessions Workshop Series that can be found on pro.harman.com. We're adding new sessions daily, and right now we have over 30 sessions scheduled for the remainder of the year, so watch for those on the calendar. And now I'd like to introduce you to Jenny Bass, the presenter for today's webinar. Jenny is a touring lighting director, designer, programmer, and technician. Throughout her career, Jenny has worked with a variety of touring acts, including the Avalanches, Mary Mack, Ray Srummerd, Tanashi, and Earth, Wind, and Fire. And now I'll pass it over to you, Jenny. Hi, thanks, Laura. And thanks so much for Martin and Harmon for having me. Um, yeah. So this is using lighting design to tell a story. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of things. Um, we're gonna talk about how do you set the mood of the whole show and how do you um, heighten the drama of not only the songs, but kind of the, the whole show, the entire performance. Uh, another way to think of this is how do you heighten the emotion um, for each piece? Um, how do you help the audience also, you know, how do you give them signals to, to help them calm down, to help them focus on a certain point? And then we're also gonna go through some, some different mediums that you can kind of draw on uh, to, get, uh, you know, to get inspiration for, for music, even if it's coming from a different art form. So the arc of a song, um, if it's a slow song, I find, you know, depending on the song, uh, less can be a lot more. Uh, you know, thinking of the big uh, TV moments where it's this beautiful ballad um, and then there's, you know, the most emotional part of the song and there's, you know, just a gentle sweep, uh, kind of thinking about uh, using lighting to, to tell the story. And if, it, if the story is all coming from the music and doesn't need that much um, emphasis from the lighting, then kind of let that happen instead of always trying to to do as much as possible. Um, this can also cause things, you know, the attention to be drawn to the right place. Um, so that uh, if there's a solo or if there's something like that, um, you can make that be the focal point. Um, in a song, depending on the song, um, I try to start minimally as possible so that when the, as the song builds, you know, there's somewhere for, for it to go. There are some exceptions, like if there's, um, if it's the song that everyone's been waiting for um, and they kind of roll from one song to the other and you want to keep, um, you know, the, the tension going, the, the heightened um, things, but you, you still want to hold some things back. You know, if, even if you start with a big, you know, start to the song, you still want to hold a couple things back so you still have somewhere to build, um, you know, and, and using more movement and more color chases and that kind of thing can really um, add more, you know, heightened tension uh, to the whole song. So between songs, um, is, the, is the change too dramatic? Um, does it kind of, you know, do people go from really high to like nothing? Or, um, or is that what you want, like for a speech? If there is, you know, like for this look right here, I would probably take all the white lights out, take the kind of extra lights out, and then maybe make it a little more toned down color choice, um, but not, not too fast. <laughs> um, and also make sure that between one song and the other song, you know, they look different, especially if you're rolling over. Um, it's a really good signal to the audience that the song has changed. Um, and even if you go between looks that are kind of, you know, using the same color palettes, um, especially if, um, you know, the artist wants a limited color palette throughout the whole uh, show, 
make sure you're still making some kind of change, you know, so clear signals. Like if it's a red and blue song that goes to a red and blue song, maybe just your two main fixtures, switch them so that, you know, there's still an obvious change, even if it's in the same kind of world. Um, and then if it is a color scheme throughout, how do you, how do you make that difference? You know, do you use accent, you know, different colored accent lights and that kind of thing, just so that there is a change between each piece. And the whole arc of the show, um, you know, just how within a song there should, you know, be a build or a change, um, have that build throughout the entire show. So, you know, don't use all of your tips and all of your tricks that you've got in the, in the first song, um, even if it is a really big song and one of the most famous songs that the artist has so that they give a lot of um, energy to the audience. You still don't want to use every, um, every trick that you have. And because you are going from nothing, you know, that build will still be there, even if you're not using all your, your tricks. Um, yeah, and try to use, you know, especially you know, some of the, the bigger movements or the flashier kind of things you have, try to keep that more towards the end um, or, or layer the, the tricks that you have and then at the end use everything. Um, and then also um, the, if, there, it, if it does end on a slow song, like the Avalanche is one of their biggest songs was more ballady. Um, so they still always ended on a slow song, but it was still very effective because in the song before that it was, a big song so I could use everything I had. And then for the slow song, it was, you know, just as dramatic because the change between all of it to nothing um, still worked. And then if you have, if you have a lot of speeches um, throughout your entire show, make sure that you have, you know, something that really signals the audience, this is the in-between time. This is when someone's gonna talk. Um, one way to do this is have like a color change. So if it's um, like Leah Michelle um, doesn't like as much kind of movement and that kind of thing. So, you know, and some of the, sh some of the pieces are more theatery. So you don't want necessarily, you know, you're not going to have a big change where you can kind of, um, you know, have all the moving light stop and then it's the speeches. Um, so a color change. Um, especially if you use kind of a consistent color palette uh, for that kind of show, can really, you know, signal to the audience, this is the time that you're going to, you know, interact with the singer. Um, it lowers the tension, it gives them a focal point um, for in between, unless it's a time when they're just hyping the music, then I would try to, you know, stop movement, stop chases, stop all of that, because um, it is a calmer moment where you're actually supposed to be paying attention to it. Uh, what the artist is saying. Um, if it is a DJ that's hyping the music, um, maybe there's something, um, you, don't, you definitely don't wanna stop the tension, you wanna keep that building. But then at the same time, maybe you have something that accents those moments so that you're working with the DJ and you're actually you know, heightening what they're doing and making uh, the moments where they're talking an even bigger moment. Um, also match the mood of the speeches, like, if there is a moment that's, you know, a lot of times an artist will dedicate the show to someone or talk about an issue that they've had that they want, you know, to share so other people can learn from it as well. And, you know, maybe make that moment in a different world. If they do have a lot of speeches and there is, you know, a color scheme throughout that, maybe make it a little bit different for that moment so that you, you're giving, um, you know, back of the mind signals to the audience that this, this moment's going to be different. Um, also, you know, with each piece, what is the blackout going to be? What is, you know, like there was one in Leah Michelle where it's a big theater moment and it ends with the big kerplunk, you know, and you want that to be a blackout because you want it to kind of accent exactly what she's doing. And then, you know, but if it is a, a kind of like rollover from one to the other, maybe you don't necessarily need a blackout, especially if they go from singing to a speech, you know, is that going to be more distracting than just kind of doing a color change and bringing everything down? And with drops, that is, you know, one of the 
the greatest moments for heightening tension, obviously. Um, you know, you want, you want to find a good way to kind of build with that. And if you have, you know, a lot of DJs will do every, every you know, even if they have similar songs, you know, their famous songs that they're using, a lot of times they will, you know, they'll feed off the audience and they'll have, you know, different timings each, um, each day. So how do you build a consistent show, you know, with it being able to do that? Uh, one technique that I use is I actually have a fader that I can match, um, that, you know, when I bring it up, the, the movement is more or the, um, or the spin of the gobos is more and that kind of thing. So I can actually match what they're doing. Um, you know, you get to know an artist better and kind of see, see where they're at and try to, you know, build with that. Because sometimes it's fast and sometimes it's, you know, a nice drawn out thing. Um, and it's such a great thing to be able to match that every night. Um, I really like to, you know, depending on, you know, there's different kind of drops, but the ones where, you know, it's building, 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 and then there's that moment of, you know, nothing. I try to black out during that moment so that I can really you know, you take away all of the sensory. There's no music, there's no lights, you know, there's nothing to pay attention. All you have is that tension to kind of hold on to. And then when it drops, it just makes it that much bigger. Um, one of my absolute favorites is when, or favorite kind of song to do, is when it's got a nice slow intro and then it, you know, it has a beautiful drop it just I love that because you can just it's the best way to kind of build and release tension and then you can have um I try to do minimal um in the even if it's kind of building at the slow part of the song so that when it does drop it's that much bigger and I always try to do like some kind of flash you know and there's nothing like hitting that moment and you literally see the audience bounce you know uh, drawing attention. So humans are naturally attracted to two things more than anything. And that is, you know, intensity and then movement. So, you know, if you do, um, like for this drum moment each night, I try to do a nice sweep. So I could go like, you know, nice backlight and then everything sweeps to the drummer during the big moment. Because there is a big moment where it's just this huge solo and that's kind of the only thing going on um, so you know the singer will literally move to the side and all you can see is the drummer doing you know crazy hits and that kind of thing um, and then for that you can use intensity and and the movement um, a, a color change can also uh, be a good way so for this, um, you know, having it in like a red kind of backlight and then moving to white will also cause that intensity change just, you know, from how the fixtures are made. Um, and also using spotlight move sometimes uh, can, can actually be effective, um, especially if you have limited spotlights. Um, you know, a lot of times it'll be better to kind of, you know, do a fade out in between, but sometimes you know, it can be effective just to do the big, you know, so that everything is right there. Um, some examples of drawing attention. Um, one with color is that if you have like a nice jazz kind of piece going, um, you know, you still want to draw attention to the soloists. Uh, one example is that of that is I just did a, a road show and they had three Rhodes uh, pianos on stage so when the solo starts you know if you've not heard the piece if you've not seen the the band before you may not know you know it it might take you a second to be like who's soloing so if you do a nice color change like i tried to do you know if if all the roads had pink on it then whoever was doing the solo would have white all of a sudden um so that and do it right before the solo starts so that you know everyone looks that way and then it's a solo and it's just a, a beautiful kind of moment you kind of get that from theater so in theater if if someone has an entrance you want to start the light um intensity going up right before they enter 
so that the, you know, especially if it's a dramatic entrance, you know, maybe make the timing on that a little bit faster. So people literally, um, you know, the murderer enters and then you, you sweep over before they're even in the door and then they come out and then it's a big moment, you know, if, if everyone's looking over here and you don't have that intensity change, you know, someone could come on stage and then half the audience doesn't even notice. And then, and then they come, you know, and you've, you ruin a very dramatic, you know, what could have been a very dramatic moment. Um, and this, you know, you can apply that to soloists. If you have a big guitar solo, maybe bring up that light or bring up that spotlight a moment before they start the solo. So everyone, by the time everyone's turned to them, you, you know, then, then they can go and it's just so much more effective than um, there's a solo now and then, you know, they're already starting it, you know, and uh, that's kind of the goal. It's not always <laughs> easier said than done, but um, one of my favorite moments uh, for kind of building tension and that kind of thing with this is um, EWF, they have this, you know, really uh, big uh, bass solo moment and they he starts downstage and then he kind of moves upstage and then with that you know the designer had the lights downstage and then as they move the entire kind of thing moved upstage and it was just very effective with the movement to kind of you know build with him and kind of move with him Another way to draw, um, to kind of make it bigger than life, is to have a new, um, a new trick, you know, from lighting fixtures and that kind of thing that people haven't seen before. Even if they don't know lighting well enough to know that that's a new fixture and that's a new thing that it's doing, people notice when they haven't seen something before. Um, and it really heightens the tension because they're like, this is cool, but I don't know why. <laughs> um, and I try to save these moments for, you know, the, one of the biggest moments of the show or a moment where even maybe if it's calmer, if it's doing something um, which gives people, you know, more of a way to, to, you know, to just being noticing, to just noticing that the lights are doing something special. Um, an example of this is if you are using the new Martin light, uh, lighting fixture, the Mac Aura PXL, it's a multiple source wash light. So there's kind of different ways that you can use that that um, you know, the audience might have not have seen. Um, because you can, it's a wash light that you can pixel map, you can actually um, you know, do a full stage like color chase, kind of like what you're seeing um, on the photo. And you know, the audience probably hasn't seen that before within the fixture and, you know, it can be so much more effective than just fixtures going. Um, it's also twice as powerful as the aura. So having that kind of intensity with a color change can just be very effective. Um, I haven't gotten to play with it yet, but I would love to see, you know, a color chase with a, with the zoom effect, you know, going in and out so that, um, you can kind of create that psychedelic kind of thing and, you know, do with the pixel mapping just could be so effective. Um, especially if that's kind of all that's on, all that you can see going on with some haze. Oh, I love, I love it. Um, so now we're going to go to the inspiration section where we're kind of drawing on different mediums. Uh, these are going to be natural light, paintings, architecture. I'm not going to cover other concerts as much, but it's, you know, it's always good to see what other, other people are doing, especially when you can, you know, be in the audience and, and or standing behind the lighting designer. I love seeing, you know, different effects that people have used or different um, ways to program it, like what I was talking about with the, you know, I learned that from someone else, the, the uh, the quickness of, you know, the, the drop being on a fader. Um, just, yeah, I feel like everyone does something a little bit different and it's so, you know, which makes it so that you can always be learning. So natural light and street lights. Um, it's great just to walk around and kind of see, you know, during the day or kind of a desk you can see here, how, the different light is kind of reacting in, in the world around you. 
um, you know, how you can layer light to make it more, you know, dramatic, kind of like, um, like you're seeing here with the, the shadows, but then it's still kind of dusky. Um, and fences are one of my favorite things, um, just especially with street lights, kind of, you know, coming down at, at different angles that wouldn't naturally you know, may not be the same angle that it's coming down from the sun, you know, would be from the sun, but it's still effective. You know, the different patterns it makes on the ground. Um, I used to take a lot of, you know, go on walks and take a lot of photos. And, you know, it's always funny when someone comes up on you and you're just taking photos of the sidewalk. <laughs> um, and especially how it looks outside. Uh, one of my favorite things uh, to do when I first started learning lighting, and um, besides walking around and seeing how you know, different shadows were cast, was just to, you know, sit down in a park at different times of the day and just take notes about how, you know, how the sun was hitting people, how, you know, dust looked, you know, how is the blues and that kind of making the whole world, you know, pop a little bit more. And um, how is it changing as well? And, you know, seeing the different, the different times of day, you know, how does that feel? How does that make you feel? How does, you know, how, do, how is the energy more? Is it calming down as the sun starts going down compared to, you know, people playing in parks, you know, midday? And paintings especially can be so effective. Um, you know, a lot of concerts will just be the, the flash and trash and that kind of thing, but not all of them are. Some of them are you know, carpets and they're, you know, it's like you've entered their little jam session and they want to make it more homey. So how can you use more, you know, theater techniques um, to, to do that? And how can you, you know, you know, and how can you use paintings to kind of filter that? Um, for example, if you are lighting it like a room, but you need more light, um, how do you, in paintings, it can be really effective, um, especially older paintings. Um, studying how they make a room look lit in a time where they didn't actually have, you know, room like lighting like we have now. Um, but you you look at it and without analyzing it, it looks t completely natural. But there's absolutely no way that there's you know light coming from that angle. But they've done it so effectively, um, you know, kind of drawing on that. And then also. Um, you know, how do they achieve this? And how can you also uh, translate things like what you see in this painting here um, with up light, you know, it looks creepier, you know exactly that it's, you know, a night scene, you know that um, maybe it's not the happiest moment and that kind of thing. Um, and if, if there is music that's like that, if there is kind of intense music and you want it to, um, to seem a little creepier, you know, maybe you do have some up lights um, and maybe you have moments where, you know, that's featured, you know, and that's all that's going on is um, just this really intense, you know, shadows going the wrong way look. Um, it works because people aren't used to shadows going the opposite way, but they may not know that, which kind of makes it that much more fun. And then architecture. Um, how do you use the natural architecture in, you know, not just in uh, as examples for your work, but also how do you use it for, um, to accent, you know, the space? Um, you know, how can you translate focuses on the architecture to really accent them? And then how do you use architecture to expand the space? You know, maybe sometimes bring in the audience more part of the show. Um, and also using gobos on, you know, on architecture to kind of make it pop that much more. And especially textured surfaces, you can maybe put a gobo and then a back in a wash light of different um, colors and really make, make the texture even more textured. Um, and especially with set pieces, you can, you know, you can almost make wallpaper, you know, and then change the wallpaper for each song. Um, you know, a nice strong gobo, and then a fill-in color. And um, dance, especially if there's dance in the show, it can be just such a great, 
the kind of lighting can just be such a great way to kind of accent what's going on. If there's a lot of movement and that's kind of what you're catching, you know, especially if there is a dance moment, you can use side lighting to really accent the movement or even using backlight. Um, if, if you want to, you know, like in the painting, if you want just like a silhouette of a dancer, um, you can, you know, maybe a little bit of side light, but then just a big backlight so that all you can see is how they're moving. And especially if there aren't very many dance parts in the show, you can really, by changing the direction of the light, you can really make it its own world, um, really accent it, really make it something that people remember um, and very kind of the perspective of how, how that's seen. Uh, choosing color. Um, should there be moments where maybe this is the only time you use this color? Or maybe it's, um, you use layered colors the whole time. You know, you have a song that's red and blue and then, uh, you know, a yellow and red song. Um, maybe there's one song where you just have it a little more matted, even though it um, wouldn't be, you know, different kinds of reds. Maybe um, like in this one right here, um, just to make it a different moment, different from the show, really, you know, telling the story of, you know, this is the heightened moment. Um, also, do you, um, you know, you know, if, if you are, if there is a song that's about the sun, do, do you make it feel more sunny or do you make it yellow? So that it's like, this is the sun. <laughs> Um, it's kind of that choice of, um, do you want people to feel more excited or do you want them to feel like it's a nice sunny day? Um, what emotion are you using to, you know, how can you use the lights to evoke the, the feeling that you want the audience to have? Um, if the song mentions a color, you know, if it's a, a bright blue day, um, do you want to use, do you want to use blue or do you want to make the audience miss that color? You know, you're kind of building tension by um, not doing, you know, not doing the expected. And then also, um, sometimes it can be too cheesy. <laughs> um, you can really, kind of what I mentioned before, you can really use color to heighten the space and, um, you know, accent different elements of the space. You can actually have a forced perspective too. If you have, um, you can start with a darker blue, especially like a big, um, a lot of tresses, really wide um, concert. You can kind of maybe start a little bit darker in the middle and then kind of just slightly lighter um, going out and really, you know, vary the blues. Um, it can give a forced perspective that it's, you know, the space is even bigger than it looks. Um, you can also make different scenic, uh, different scenic, scenic elements pop. Um, everyone in the audience actually has a different perspective uh, because if someone is sitting um, down more, they're gonna see a different perspective on the lights. And that's kind of something to keep in mind to kind of maybe heighten elements more. Um, an example of this is there was um, there were some architecture lights in one of the venues that I went to, and and only half the audience could really see that because there was a big um, because half the audience was above and then the other half was below. So the the ones below, a lot of them couldn't see it. So you can kind of like heighten tension with that by using those, and then you know half of the audience is like, oh, and then the other ha half has that moment where they're like, what are they excited about? And what's kind of, you know, that different perspective can, you can use the audience to kind of, to help you, you know, tell a better story. Um, how do you add these elements to kind of heighten uh, the drama and the tension? Uh, if you are, um, like I said, the audience, and then the aging eye. Um, our eye over time kind of, it gets more, um, it loses clarity. Um, I'm just gonna read this straight off because um, it's a quote. 
Um, as our eyes age, the lens moves, moves away from its younger pr uh, pristine clarity towards something that is yellower and somewhat translucent. As yellow pigments uh, accumulate in the lens slowly over time, um, so slowly that we don't notice it. And in the picture here, you can kind of see um, how the different ages in see light differently. Um, LEDs with narrow band additive mixing heighten this difference. So it's kind of finding ways to, to make it so that the whole audience is seeing as even a show as possible. Um, additive color lighting with a bet, uh, as additive color lighting gets better with broader coverage and less missing colors, then the issue diminishes. Um, in particular, two enhancement help this problem. Use more colors of narrow band LEDs to fill in the gaps or use broader band uh, phosphoric converted LEDs. It makes the colors more for all audience, no matter their age. So kind of make it more what they're seeing already so that they're used to, um, so that the differences that there already are aren't heightened, if that makes sense. And kind of thinking maybe I, Skip the examples. Maybe not. Um, and then on to my thank yous. So I wanted to thank uh, Brad, um, especially for um, kind of the new, um, like the aging eye and that kind of thing. Uh, Nick Peel, cause he gave me a lot of the, um, when I was learning, he gave me a lot of the ideas for different perspectives to look on. Um, and then also uh, Mike Wood, because he wrote the, the article that I took quotes from and Kenny Wright for the photo um, and his original work on that. Um, and I also want to thank uh, Harmon and Martin. All and right. if you want to contact me, um, here's my contact info. Wonderful. We do have some questions for you, Jenny, if you're open to them. Yep. All right. Um, when you're thinking of the arc of a song or a show, how much do you consult with the band about the story? Um, it really depends on the artist. Some artists um, don't want to hear about it <laughs> and other artists, you know, want to be involved. They, there's an element that they really want to accent. Um, there's moments where, you know, maybe you didn't realize that for them when they wrote it, it was about the guitar. So they really want, you know, that person to be accented more or that kind of thing. Um, and I, I feel like it's never a bad thing to know more of the story. Um, and the more that you talk with them about it, the more that they can kind of engage with, with what you're doing as well. Okay, the next question is asking, how much influence does the band have on the between song look? It depends. Um, I, haven't, I haven't actually had a band be that concerned with that element of it. They always tend to be more concerned with the songs. Um, I think, if there was stuff still moving when they, when they were talking, they would notice. <laughs> but um, part of that would be, um, I think the biggest element of that would be, do they want to see the audience or do they not want to see the audience? And that is something that a lot of times they will tell you right off the bat. <laughs> what is your favorite color combination that you like to use in most shows? My favorite color combination is pink and green. Um, most people hate it. <laughs> you know, green people or people are people don't look good under the color green, but it's my favorite color. And then it's it's contrasting colors pink, um, so that kind of gives the biggest pop between the two. So I really, yeah, I, I try to get it in if I can. Uh, for example, when they uh, when I did Leah Michelle, they have one song that changes every night. Um, so I'm like, there's no way I could possibly know. And they, you know, that's a secret to everyone, even me. So that's the green and pink song. <laughs> Do you have an example of how you lit a DJ more theatrically? Yeah. Um, it depends. 
it, sometimes the DJ doesn't want to have light on them, especially. Um, but one of my favorite things to do is to kind of like maybe just have flashes or have like lighter, have, um, have, you know, darker kind of lights or darker colors. And then, you know, for the drop, changing everything to white, I think I do, I probably do that more than anything. And then also having the movement go from, you know, something small to something big. I love, um, especially if it's a punted show, I love re re if you release the pan and tilt, um, if it's a normal show, it looks awful, but or some, you know, in most circumstances, but if you release the pan and tilt, it just makes this crazy wave where wherever the lights were at, they're like, you know, just this, yeah. And that really heightens that moment. And how do you match colors to specific photos or artwork? Is there a secret to perfect color mixing? Yeah, I kind of, I, I would say something that's normally that I, I've never really had to think about it as much because I do, um, I would have like the artwork in front of me and then kind of, um, it's going to be different for different kind of LEDs. You know, they don't all have the same color range. Um, so kind of always have your, you know, don't do it by memory. Always have it right there so you can look at it and then kind of which color you're kind of matching. Cause there's, you know, most paintings won't have, you know, just blue, just yellow. They're all going to have that gradient. So kind of first go through which one you like the most and then color match to that. Um, it is interesting learning color theory. If it's not like a natural thing to you can really, really help kind of additive and subtractive. Um, then you at least know what kind of direction you're going instead of just keep on, you know, picking and choosing. And then also dial it in, you know, don't just pick on the, the color picker, but actually have like, you know, have more of a movement, if that makes sense. Okay, the next question is asking, what is your favorite console and what was your first? Um, Grand Amé. Uh, hopefully the three soon. <laughs> I've only got to play it on a couple times, but um, right now it's a two. Um, and it just had, especially with music, it just has a lot of flexibility. I do really love the PRG um, console as well, uh, especially if you're doing something TV and there's no way you can time code it and that kind of thing. It's got some really good functions. Um, but yeah. And then my first console was kind of the strand. Um, I was kind of more the designer, but I still had to do kind of some stuff on it. But the first show that I was programming on was the ETC EOS, the one with the with those panels that kind of came out that um, that you <laughs> it was supposed to be like the uncrashable desk. Um, and I unfortunately figured out that if you like got one of the panels halfway in, then it, it did actually crash the desk. <laughs> So one of my first times on the console, they left me alone with it for like five minutes and I crashed it. It's like, I don't know what I did. <laughs> All right, we have another question asking, what is your favorite eye candy fixture? Ooh. Oh, I love, I love the magic panels and the, um, and that fixture that I showed you earlier. Um, and then also the, um, uh, um, a lot of the the Martin like spots just have like so many gobos that you can kind of make every song you know have its own different look. Um, uh, but but magic panels, I love the the three sixty because um, you can kind of show each LED and like make different you know looks throughout, and then just have a moment where it goes crazy and people are just like whoa. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited to pixel map with the new Martin fixtures so that you can also have that moment where it's just, you know, I've just not seen, you know, so far, maybe someone's done it, but you know, the color chase with the crazy psychedelic look where the, the zoom goes in and out, there's just nothing like it. 
All right, it looks like that was the last question. Um, if anybody thinks of another question and they want to reach out to Jenny directly, her contact information is up on the screen right now. Um, Jenny, thank you again for being with us. I think this was your third session with us. We really appreciate your continued support. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you all for attending. Um, we do have an updated calendar out on pro.harman.com. So we look forward to seeing you on future sessions as well. Thanks and have a great day, everybody. Bye, Jenny. Bye. Thank you, Jenny. Good job. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Bye. Bye.